Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Airsoft and Airsoft Insider doing some more firearm progress updates. This time on my SAS-12, you guys may recall this China-made uh, 12 gauge semi-automatic box magazine fed shotgun. In our last update, we installed this ATI T3 adjustable stock. Very cool stock, very, very comfortable. This thing is going to work very well. Well, with the back getting all tactical, we had to do some cool stuff with the front. And I think we did some very, very cool stuff with the front. Up here, we have a black Aces tactical, I believe it's the RB7M, it's the Mossberg full length rail. How this guy works, it attaches in the back at the receiver and up front at the barrel. I went with this for a couple of different reasons. One, it's the only one that had the right length and the right profile for what I wanted to do. Two, the mount up at the front, instead of being like an hourglass shape or like an eye on its side where it just kind of fits in between the magazine tube and the barrel, it actually clamps to the barrel and it can be run with an extended magazine tube or with no magazine tube at all because it has a little adapter, a little one inch adapter. So in my case, that allowed me to install a flashlight. So we have an integrated flashlight on this. How to install this on your SAS-12. It's pretty intimidating. You're gonna to have to get out the drill, the tap and die set, and how it's designed to work on a Mossberg at the rear, it's supposed to replace that rear pin, that trigger pin. You can see, like my rear pin is up here. That's the problem, not gonna, obviously not gonna line up. So you had to drill and tap the receiver to fit screws. Now, I use the screws that came with the kit. It is, I believe, six by 32 thread and pitch and um, I was able to find a tap and die set and the right screwdriver or the right uh, drill, drilled it, tapped it, it went pretty smooth. On this side, you'll see it perfectly clears the receiver. It just, it's like it was designed for this thing. The one thing I did have to do though, is I had to notch out the actual caulking handle so that it would clear. This is really hard to do without looking at it, so that it would go at a better angle so that it would clear the rail mounting point otherwise it ran right into it um, so that's how you install it at the rear it comes with two little rubber spacers but I didn't like the size of how they fit so I went with some different foam spacers and it fits very very well it keeps it just perfectly off the receiver like it should up front I used that mount that the, the kit came with and you can either use the included one inch, a little aluminum ring, or in this case, a flashlight. And that's cool. Probably get into a different flashlight eventually, something with a remote switch on it, but for now, it works pretty well. So why I went with this was so that I could have a nice railed surface up top to make it look a little more tactical, to give me more options for mounting other accessories, and because look at it. Look how cool this thing looks up here. Now, I still have to break in the gun a little more. I've confirmed that it shoots, um, but these are a little finicky with the ammo that you feed them. So I need to break it in. I've got some good breaking ammo for it. And once it's good and broken in, I'm going to cut the barrel down to 19 inches long, which puts it right at this rib right here. So it's going to have a little bit of an underbite with the flashlight. We'll see what that does if it blows that bezel off the flashlight after a couple of shots. But I want to get it broken in and shooting perfectly before I start hacking the barrel off. Because um, this is a gas-powered semi-automatic firing system, which means that things like barrel length, the pressures, those matter on this, much more so than on like a pump action shotgun. Um, but yeah, so a little bit of progress on that. Now the bad side about this rail, it costs about 140 bucks. You may recall that this gun, this whole firearm costs about 140 bucks. So as it currently sits, you have a $130 gun with a $120 stock and a $130 rail. It's kind of weird when your accessories cost as much as the actual firearm. However, look at it this way. You've got about 400 bucks in this whole package. This is a hell of a lot of gun for 400 bucks. So we'll see. We'll see how this progress or how this uh, project continues. Like I said, I got more stuff I want to do on it. Um, definitely going to get it broken in some more, get shooting more, get out to the range, get some good video of it out on the range. And uh, yeah, 
see how bad this thing will bruise up my shoulder when I'm running some more slugs and some buck and uh, maybe do a little bit of practical shooting with it because it seems to be set up pretty well for that. So stay tuned. We're going to be hitting the range with this thing very soon. Thanks for watching.